Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna be talking about makeup mistakes, but specifically makeup mistakes that you could be making under your eyes and how to correct them and how to just do them better. So let's get right into this video. Okay, so mistake number one has to start with your skincare and how you prep your under eyes for your concealer because listen, it all starts with how you prep your skin, how you take care of it. Like that's like the, the, the basics, right? So let's go to the basics first and let's talk about skin prep for your under eyes. So there's gonna be two different ways you can prep your under eyes. Now this is gonna really pertain to people that are experiencing creasing. So if you're experiencing a lot of creasing or if you're having a really hard time just properly locking in your concealer and setting it down with powder, like you're having a hard time really locking it in to the point where it doesn't move and you're experiencing like it creasing and just moving around throughout the day and it's not like laying quite right, not really laying quite smooth. Listen, first step is good skin prep. So if you are experiencing any of those things, I want you to take into consideration a couple of these next tips. So I'm gonna show you on one eye a thicker eye cream, and there's nothing wrong with this eye cream. I actually love this eye cream. I primarily use this at night though. This is the Fenty Skin Thick and Smooth Rich Peptide Eye Cream. Again, it is thick. It's wonderful. It feels amazing under your eyes, but in my opinion, if you're going to use this in the daytime under your concealer, just less is more. Less is more. If you're someone who really needs and counts on a thick, rich eye cream under their concealer, that's totally fine, but just make sure you're not using too much. So I'm going to twist this up. That's how you get this product out. It's just like their lip balm and then it does this, but which is kind of perfect because I'm actually going to show you how to use way too much because that's one of the mistakes that I see a lot is just using overall too much under eye creams, lotions, whatever it is, just putting too much product on your eye before you go in with concealer can be a really big mistake that's going to lead to a lot of these problems that we're about to talk about. So I'm going to push this under my eye. Okay, that's way too much, but you'll get the idea. So just... You try to blend it in. You can see, like, this is really thick. Actually, I have to, like, take some of this away. Put way too much on my under eye. Try to rub in the rest. It is a thick, thick cream. Okay, so it feels, you know, very plumped because it's got that moisture under my eyes. But this is going to cause lots of problems in terms of creasing and the overall longevity of your concealer when you're wearing it. So what I would recommend instead, okay, and this might seem like not enough hydration or just not enough under your eyes, but trust me, it will be unless you are severely dry, okay? So just taking a hydrating serum, just something basic, like a hyaluronic acid, just something very simple, hydrating, lightweight serum base, okay? This one's from May Love. They had actually sent me this in PR and I've been liking it a lot. It's the Intensive Hydration Serum. So it comes in a dropper. I'm just gonna drop a little bit. That's probably too much even on my hand and just work this under my eye. So the reason why this is gonna work better if you're experiencing creasing is because serums penetrate your skin more than like a cream. They're lightweight, they're watery, they're like a little essence. They soak in and they absorb into your skin much quicker. They don't leave much of a residue, if, if any, really. But what you're left with is deep hydration and that visible, like supple, plumpness to your under eye, which is going to be ideal for under eye concealer. So this is like a great, great tip to just switch out your products under your eyes, switch from thick to much thinner. And I'm telling you, it's going to make a world of difference. And then you might not even need to do any other techniques other than just switching out your eye prep. Honestly, the next couple of tips are also incredible to utilize to prevent your under eyes from looking cakey or creasy or moving around or just looking not smooth and flawless. So now that I've talked quite a bit, I'm gonna actually apply more of this Fenty one because there's a reason why. This is part of the mistake number two. The mistake number two would be going in right away after you've applied your under eye prep, like your creams, not your hydrator, this is fine. This absorbs quick like that right away. But your creams, like your under eye creams, not letting them dry down completely before you go in with your actual concealer, that is a problem. That is gonna cause your concealer to crease for sure for sure, because you're putting a wet product on top of another wet product, not allowing it to dry down in between is just gonna be a mess because they're just gonna melt together. It's gonna cause your, your under eye concealer to slip around and it's not gonna make it as easy to set it into place and to really lock it down because it's like wet on top of wet and then you're trying to like dry it out with powder. It's not cute, trust me. So now I'm gonna go in and show you what I'm talking about and I'm gonna use one of my favorite concealers at the moment. It's the House Labs Triclone Skin Tech Concealer. That is a mouthful every single time, I'm like exhausted after that. I wear the shade 21 light medium neutral. So this is gonna be my concealer. Now let me show you what it looks like when you just go directly on top of that eye cream that's still pretty wet, okay? And now on this eye, since it's already dried down, I'm prepped, I feel really nice under my eyes. 
and I don't have any visible like wet texture under my eye. I'm going to go in with my concealer, same one, House Labs Triclone Skin Tech, and I'm going to do a different technique too. I'm just going to put it where I really need it, which is clearly right there where I have the most redness and darkness under my eye. I'm going to pull it out. It's a very nice modern way of applying your concealer, but I've already talked about that before, so I'm not going to get into the detail of the, you know, the overall like aesthetic of how you apply your concealer because we've already touched on that. So the other mistake I want to talk about is how you blend your concealer, okay? So I'm going to try to do this the wrong way, but it's going to be really hard for me to do this because it involves me tugging my skin and being very rough under my eye. And this actually, this, this makeup mistake right here was was actually inspired, sadly, by watching Lady Gaga. Um, she had like a, a get ready with me recently that actually me and my friend Susan Yara reviewed and just kind of talked about on her channel. Depending on when this video goes up, that video might be out, it might not be yet. So spoiler alert, it's coming either way. But I watched her and I watched that video and I watched her like blend out her concealer and she was just so rough and she tugged at her skin so much, unfortunately. So I'm gonna try to copy that. So what I saw in the video was basically like that. And it's really hard for me to do that, okay? And I'm not getting it to the full extent. But she just went back and forth, but in a really aggressive way. And she really tugged. Like, you could see her tug at her skin. Like, her skin was going back and forth with the brush, with the concealer. Actually, my skin's burning just from doing that. Now, this is not how you want to do your blending under your eye. This is the last thing you want to do. You do not want to do this motion effect. This is absolutely torturing me to do this right now. You want to make sure you're being careful. Slow it down. I'm going to show you the right way to blend on this side in just a bit. But what I saw in that video too was a lot of like skipping where you could visibly see like where her, her skin folded over. And that's not for like any wrong reason. It's just because she was so rough on her with her blending. She was just so rough with her skin. So she had like these visible skip marks where her concealer kind of skipped over and she didn't get a nice smooth blend because she was being so rough. So that is a mistake. The other mistake I want to point out that we talked about a little bit earlier is applying that wet concealer on top of a wet skin prep product like that cream that I applied and also applying too much of it because what happened, right, is now this concealer is mixing with that eye cream. I'm experiencing a bunch of pilling that just landed over here because I wiped it this way. So I mix those two products together, which is not what you want to do. You want to allow them to be their own entities before you move on to like setting them, right? So the fact that I didn't let either one dry down I didn't let the concealer dry down. I didn't let the cream dry down. It's just causing chaos with these two products. It really is not going to give you a flawless finish at all. And then on top of it now, I have this pilling that I'm experiencing where like that eye cream is actually lifting up and it's rolling up on my skin because I've so aggressively blended it up and blended that concealer into it, causing it to separate and roll up on my skin. So Lots of mistakes happening. I want you to avoid them. I really want you to have like the best. If you're gonna wear under eye concealer, I want it to be as flawless as possible. So now on this eye, I'm gonna show you my preferred method and the tips and techniques I want you to try if you're having any kind of difficulties with your under eye concealer. So I'll be using, of course, my N16 from BK Beauty. It feels so nice to actually be able to use these in a tutorial now that they're fully out. Um, I'll be using this to blend out my house labs concealer and show you how I like to set it as well. So. Take my brush. You want to be gentle, okay? This is the kind of motion that I want to see when you're doing your concealer. This is going to be the most flawless, but also gentle way to blend your under eye concealer. So what I'm doing first is I'm just using the flat side of the brush to tap in my product. And I'm getting good coverage still because I let it dry down for actually way longer than a minute, to be quite honest. So I'm maintaining the coverage, but I'm also really maintaining the coverage by using a patting motion instead of a swiping motion. Swiping blends it off. Patting blends it in. So just kind of keep that in mind. If you want coverage that looks flawless, pat your under eye concealer into your eyes. And then it's fine to switch to a swiping motion when you're blending out the edges. So now I'm going to blend out the edges so it's seamless. It blends into the rest of my complexion. I don't have foundation on in case you can't tell. So I just, I want to like blend nice and naturally into the rest of my skin. And then I really like to take the tip of this brush to blend into the delicate area under my eye where my lashes are and where I have some fine lines. This is where I want to be really delicate and just kind of blend back and forth to get a nice flawless under eye. So the difference, it might not be as visible on camera, but trust me, switching out your techniques where these techniques are going to make such a huge, huge difference in your overall appearance of your under eye concealer and especially the way it looks in person, which is the most important thing, right? You don't want to walk up to somebody and then them think, 
wow, that under eye concealer is really cakey or it's really creasy or oh, it's not looking good. You know, like you want your under eye, you want all your makeup, but specifically your under eye too. If you want to be beautiful in person, very natural, you want to look like you just have flawless skin and not like you have a bunch of makeup on underneath your eyes. So now that I blended out both sides, I'm just going to go back to this brush for a second and I'm just going to blend out the rest because no one would leave their under eye concealer looking that terrible. So just fix it a little bit. Now this next mistake is in regards to how you set your under eye concealer. This is a big, big deal. If you are someone like me and you do your makeup really early in the morning and you want it to look just as nice as it did first thing in the morning as it does at the end of the day, these steps are absolutely crucial. So what you set your under eyes with is going to be super important. So I do get a lot of questions online and I want to address this because I get tons of questions about this actually is what's the difference between a setting powder and a finishing powder? So for example, NARS soft matte powder, this is going to be more of a finishing powder regardless of whatever it says online. I'm not even sure what like the verbiage is online, but this is a finishing powder, meaning something you want to put on your skin after you've already kind of set it to finish it up. It's really that simple. I promise you. This is also going to be like very mattifying. Um, so if you have oily skin, it's great for like oil control to touch up throughout the day. But you might be confused because a powder, you might think a powder is a powder. It's not. There's definitely a difference in formula and like how it wears and what it's supposed to do under your eyes. So what you want to do is make sure you're using an actual setting powder, which traditionally speaking, those are going to be your loose powders. Loose powders are typically, I'm sure there's some pressed powders or are marketed as setting powders but get a loose powder. This is going to look the most flawless under your eyes. It's going to look a little less detectable as a pressed powder. Pressed powders tend to have a heavier finish than a loose powder. So you don't want that heaviness under your eyes necessarily, and, or maybe you do. But if you want them to look really flawless, set it with an actual setting powder. So this is the Huda Beauty Easy Bake Powder. These powders are fantastic. But you know, I also love the Givenchy Prism Libre powders. Mine is just in root still from the Sephora sale. I haven't gotten it yet. But uh, that's a great powder for under eyes, especially if you have fine lines, if you have any texture, if you have more mature under eyes, it's a very smoothing, very blurring powder. This one is also. So this is a great, great powder to set your under eyes. So I'm going to do the wrong side first, the mistake side first. I'm going to take my NARS powder and I'm just going to grab another Delium Tools 940 brush. This is a really old brush of mine. And I'm just going to get a whole bunch of products. This is going to be kind of a two-in-one mistake that I'm going to show you. So mistake number one, I, I'm pretty sure I've showed you this a couple of times before, but it's important to touch on it again, is how you apply your under eye powder, okay? Like the technique that you utilize to place this powder under your eyes. Wrong powder in the first place. But then on top of it, I'm just going to swipe back and forth, right? Because, you know, in, in theory, swiping back and forth is like blending, but you're not blending it. Instead, you're creating patchiness and you're buffing and you're lifting those products together and you're just kind of making a muddied mess under your eye. So you probably think, you know, logically, when you blend back and forth, you're blending it. It's going to look good. It's going to look flawless because you're really blending it under your eye. It's too harsh. It's going to create too much friction under your eye. It's not going to look flawless, but more importantly, it's going to lift up the wet product that is underneath. So on top of it, this is not going to properly set your under eye. This is not a setting powder. It's a finishing powder. So I would just, as a safe measure, if you're confused about like which is which and what to use under your eyes, just go with something loose. That's like the best rule of thumb. Just like something easy to keep in mind. If you're ever in, whenever in doubt, just go for a loose powder under the eyes as opposed to a pressed. Now there's definitely times where I use pressed powder on my eyes, like when I'm on the go and I need like a five minute makeup, I'll use my Kosas Cloud Set Powder under my eyes for like a quick set under my eyes, but I go into it knowing that it's not going to make my under eyes flawless the entire day because it's a finishing powder. It's not a setting powder. It's great for when I'm in a pinch and I just need a quick like out the door makeup look. It's great for that, but I know going into it, it's not properly setting my under eyes. This is what's going to properly set your under eyes. So I'm going to take my Huda Beauty loose powder and I'm going to take my N14 brush with BK Beauty. I'm going to take, I just dropped so much powder on my lap. I wish you could see it. I'm going to take a little bit of the shade Cupcake. That's the shade that I wear under my eyes. I'm going to dip my brush into my powder. Now, one tip that I love and I always recommend is instead of going right in with that product, I like to work it in the palm of my hand. This will evenly distribute the powder into all of the brush hairs. So it will just give you a nice natural finish. But another tip, before you go in and set your under eyes, go back in one last time sweep out any creases that might have happened where the product has built up from me talking 
and then you go in and powder it. So using my N14, I'm just going to use the same kind of method of just tapping it and pressing it and just being nice and gentle with my under eye, right? I don't want to cause additional wrinkles under my eye. I want to be nice and gentle and, and sweet to my under eyes and just push this lightly under my eye. So just pressing it, pressing it. I won't go and swipe unless I really have to buff out any creases that might've happened. So you'll notice I'm not gonna use any back and forth motions. You could if you really, really need to because with this under eye, I properly let it dry down. I let the skin prep dry down. I let the actual concealer dry down. So I don't have to use a lot less power to actually set it. But I still say use a tapping motion if you can and push that powder on top of the concealer. It's gonna give you such a beautiful, flawless, flawless finish. Now, I actually love this powder for baking. So just a little side note, if you are someone who loves like a very, very, very airbrushed, really flawless kind of under eye, and you're, let's say you're like going out and you want, you're gonna take pictures and you want to be like extra, extra flawless, you could take some additional powder, press it in the area that you experience, you know, any kind of creasing throughout the day typically, and this is really just like an extra bonus tip in case you need that extra, extra longevity. Like if you're gonna be out from like seven in the morning until like 10 o'clock at night, maybe throw in a little extra powder if your under eyes can take it and if you don't have severely dry under eyes. This eye is properly set. It's flawless, feels fantastic. This eye is experiencing fatigue <laughs> and lots of like irritation from rubbing back and forth. And it's just not gonna look, I mean, it looks horrible. So. Let's just compare these two. They're gonna be obvious, but they'd be even worse if you were seeing me in person right now. So that wraps up this video talking all about makeup mistakes that you could be making under your eyes and how to correct them. I hope you found this video helpful. I can't imagine you not, honestly, with the amount of people that reach out to me on a regular basis asking for tips for the under eyes specifically. This video is for you. Leave me a comment. Let me know if any of these tips have helped you out. If you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. If you like videos like this, I have so many more make a mistake videos. You can check them out right here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.